Welcome to SBI's GTM Value Creation Corner podcast with SBI CEO, Mike Hoffman Hosting. In this episode, Mike is joined by Jerry Kent, Chairman and CEO of SQL3 and TierPoint to explore how TierPoint succeeded in helping companies outsource their data center operations and the challenges faced by the industry as a result of the boom in AI growth. Their conversation highlights how the unprecedented adoption of AI has spurred TierPoint's growth momentum, as well as the challenges that loom on the horizon for an industry that requires increasingly more energy from grid infrastructure with few alternatives. Hey, Jerry, welcome to the show. Hi, Mike. How are you doing? Thanks. Um, so, uh, everybody, we're, uh, I always give time reference for this because the market changes fast. So, we're recording this in June of 2024. Uh, which has been, uh, I think, an interesting period of time since about <laughs> mid-22 uh, to uh, to this point in time. Uh, Jerry, i like all of our guests to, to introduce themselves. you got a very interesting background, a uh, ton of great experience. So tell us a little bit about yourself and to your point. Sure. Well, I'm, uh, I'm based in St. Louis. Uh, I often say I was born here. They're going to bury me here, hopefully no time soon. Uh, but uh, I've been an entrepreneur for over 40 years. I started off in the cable industry, built several companies, including Charter Communications, which is, I think, now the second largest video broadband provider in the U.S. I founded that in 93, uh, built it up, uh, met Paul Allen, co-founder of Microsoft. He had a wired world strategy in which he wanted to uh, craft the future technology of, of the cable business, particularly broadband. So we joined forces, uh, built Charter Communications, um, and in 99, we actually did what was then the third largest IPO in U.S. history with Charter. Um, the next day, UPS went public and notched us back, uh, but at least for one day, we had the bronze medal for Charter. Uh, things were going well. It was the best performing public cable stock from the IPO until right after 9-11 when I left. Uh, I was burned out, uh, needed to take some time off, and I did. Uh, but after a few months, my wife said, you're around too much. Uh, you, need to, you need to go back to work. And I had the entrepreneurial itch, so I started our parent company, SQL3, and we've had a good run. We built the largest privately owned cell tower company in the U.S. Uh, we had another 12-year run in cable with Suddenly Communications, which we ended up selling to uh, Altice, a European cable operator. Uh, but now I spend most of my time on TierPoint, which I founded in 2010. Uh, today, we have 40 data centers in 20 U.S. markets. We are a provider of co-location, connectivity, uh, private cloud, and public cloud and managed services. Great. Thanks. A lot of, a lot of interesting Interesting moments. Um, you know, I'm, I think my wife said she's going to do the same thing. I kept te- t- telling her I wanted to take sabbatical or take some time off. And she said, yeah, I'm going to throw you out of the house and tell you to do something else. So uh, I, w- I will learn fast from you. Um, so you are in, you, with, to your point, is in a business right now that is uh, in, I think, in a fortunate position uh, in the time we're in, uh, in, in a growth a growth segment and a growth growth sector. So, you know, while some companies have taken it on the chin over the last couple of years uh, in technology, uh, you you being in the data center, not one of them. What's driving uh, some of the uh, some of the growth and continued growth and momentum for you? Well, at, at TierPoint, we've uh, we've grown very well. We we launched a public cloud service a, a couple of years ago, and public cloud with Am- Amazon with AWS and, and Azure, my, uh, Microsoft, uh, we, we've really uh, seen the benefit of, of launching those services, uh, private cloud. But what, what's really exploded within the last uh, little over a year is our co-location, where we provide data center space, power, connectivity for uh, enterprise and governmental entities uh, to house their IT equipment. Uh, two things there. One, enterprises are getting out of owning their own data centers. It, it doesn't make sense really to own your own data center uh, when you can share costs with hundreds of our customers in a tier point data center facility. 
But what it's really been exploded, which really has exploded and really unprecedented as far as my career, is artificial intelligence. Uh, about a year ago, the demand just uh, uh, mushroomed like a nuclear cloud. And we're continuing to see uh, all kinds of demand for artificial intelligence. Uh, we uh, actually just installed, I think, the largest high-density power deployment for AI in the world, uh, where we're running workloads at over 50 kilowatts per cabinet. Uh, for It was publicly announced so for CoreWeave. CoreWeave, of course, runs ChatGPT for Microsoft and, and, and other workloads. Uh, but but AI, we continue to see uh, growth uh, unprecedented. There's more demand than supply. Uh, it's really hard to uh, meet the demand uh, for uh, connectivity, but mostly for power uh, here in the U.S. And we're we're certainly challenged uh, going forward in the uh, amount of power we can provide for the growth in artificial intelligence. So that, that's an interesting one. Let, let me let me come back to that. So one driver of growth, this co-location. So enterprises getting out of owning their own centers. I, I remember for a long time, there were you know, companies would say, and especially big enterprises, that we, we need to protect uh, our information, our data, and we need to own it. W was there a catalyst or a point in time where uh, where you just saw this happen and, and was there a reason for it that companies decided, hey, I'm okay with somebody else doing this? Yeah, it's really when when uh, you have to refresh equipment uh, every number of years. And once you start refreshing equipment, uh, you have to have your own personnel to staff the facility. Uh, power has, has significantly increased in cost. Uh, particularly at the start of the Russian invasion of Ukraine in February 22, we saw about a 13% increase mm -hmm. literally overnight in power costs there. And by sharing, uh, uh, by sharing the cost with hundreds of customers, as I said, like with TierPoint, um, we've really seen companies decide we don't really want to own our own data centers. We, we, we can save on costs. We don't have to refresh the equipment and we can share cost of personnel, power and other costs with, uh, uh, with tier point customers. So actually what, what I just saw a uh, analysis, analysis from Altman Salon, uh, a, a research uh, uh, organization. And they said that, that within three years, we're gonna have 96% of enterprises outsourcing uh, their data center mm -hmm. operations. How did people get over the hump of the of the security? Well, you know, they they always felt more comfortable. I have my own data center and the security associated with that. How do they get over the hump of that? Well, for one thing, we have a world class CISO with FBI clearance, and we have a whole organization of security. We've actually our uh, for our own systems and our data centers, we've incorporated artificial intelligence. Uh, into our cybersecurity defenses. We're rolling that out for our customers this year. Um, and we also have a, 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 we're part of an international network that we can share resources to fight off uh, DDoS attacks. DDoS attacks are becoming uh, 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 very frequent, but also huge volumetric attacks and by being part of an international network and sharing resources, we can fight them off uh, much better than individual companies. Can. So with all, with all of that built, you know, it, it sounds like companies have to come to the come to the conclusion of there's no way that we have as good a security team as a tier point or or you know, even if, if it's Amazon or it's or it's Azure, like they're, they're just not going to have the security infrastructure. In running their own data center as they do outsourcing. Yes, it, absolutely. They have to do their due diligence. They have to get uh, comfortable with it. But um, we have over 3,000 customers and we see every cybersecurity attack known to, you know, known to man uh, with, uh, 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 with that vast array of customers. And so we have the expertise that we can help uh, customers uh, uh, stay okay. secure. So I'm going to switch over to the to the to AI. Um, the the uh, 
the other day I was, I was playing around with chat GPT <clears throat> and I started asking it, you know, one, I, I wanted it to build an image for me of, you know, a creative representation of a growing company. And I want you to set it into a compass and I want you to do all these other things, right? It's coming back and it's, you know, in, in a matter of 15 seconds, it's producing these unique images. And I thought to myself, how much computing power did I just consume by asking it to do that? And then I think there are millions of people doing that at any one moment in time. So, so, you know, you mentioned that as the driver for your business, but we got into, you and I got into an interesting conversation the other day where, you know, I will sit at cocktail parties and, and talk to people about, you know, I, I now, you know, my daily driver cars for me and my wife, they're both electric. And I'm like, what happens when everybody gets an electric car? Can the grid handle it? And is there enough power? And you brought up something interesting around this, you know, AI and high density and these high density servers and high density cabinets and the amount of power they consume. Can you talk a little bit about that and, and what's on the horizon? Sure. Uh, first, I think it's fascinating that ChatGPT is by far the fastest adoption of technology in, in history. So I went back and looked at some stats. To get to a million users, a million users, Netflix took almost 1,300 days. Facebook took 300. The iPhone only took 74 days to reach a million users. ChatGPT took five days. And it was the fastest adoption also within two months, there's a hundred million, there were a hundred million users of chat GPT. And uh, so you're, you're exponentially growing your universe. Plus AI takes a lot more uh, power to run the workloads than uh, other regular uh, uh, IT environments. So for example, a Google search, it's estimated it could run a, a low voltage bulb for about two minutes. An AI search is many multiples of that. It's four to five times the amount of power. So what we're seeing in, in our facilities, a typical IT environment will use five, maybe 10 kilowatts per cabinet. We're seeing AI workloads at 60 to 80 kilowatts per cabinet many multiples of a regular IT workload. And so that requires an intense amount of power in a small amount of space. So that's, that's one power um, challenge because as AI proliferates, we're gonna be using much more power. In fact, I just saw an article and it was in the Wall Street Journal. Um, they, they, they cited Goldman Sachs said that AI is going to drive 160% increase in power usage from today till the end of the decade, 2030. Mm. And so what we're seeing is a real challenge in providing enough power to drive these environments. And, and we're also just moving away from the, the two phases of artificial intelligence or training and inference. And training is where... Um, it really, AI builds its knowledge, and then it moves to inference, which, which starts applying its knowledge to make predictions and to do tasks. And it takes more power for inference than training. And so we're going to see a, a, an increase in, in uh, a power usage uh, such that today, I think uh, data center power usage is about 5% of uh, U.S. usage, it's growing uh, by 2030 to 9 to 10%. So double. So I, yes. I was, you know, it might be that I was going to ask you what will be or what is your biggest barrier to continued growth? And I'm assuming that's its power availability. It, 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 it's power availability. I mean, we used to get questions about, you know, two years ago, where's your, where's your, uh, facility located, what is the cost of power, um, you know, what kind of services do you provide? And now the questions we get are, how much power can you give me and how much power can you give me? Uh, and, it's, it, and it's a so real what, challenge. What? It, you know, the other, the other thing, Mike, I didn't mention is, first of all, you have to drive enough power to run AI in a small, I said, in a small amount of space, 
But then you also have to worry about heat dissipation. It's a real problem because you have to cool the data centers and keep the equipment from overheating. And um, so that's another real driver usage of power. Now, I, I've been doing uh, AI workloads through TierPoint since uh, 2018. And uh, I now own a, a company called uh, uh, DDC, which provides self-contained liquid cooling cabinets um, that we were deploying for a number of uh, AI companies. And uh, it's very efficient because it's self-contained cooling. You walk into a data center, usually you're filling all the cold air that you're using to uh, 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 cool the environment. Here, you're actually sending liquid cooling into the cabinet. And so it's much more efficient. But uh, but it's still going to be a challenge in finding enough power uh, to drive so, these. Environments. So what are the you know, this is this is probably an opportunity for growth in other industries. Um, so it is is the is is the grid and power generation going to be able to keep up with the pace of 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 the appetite that people have for data and, and AI? Well, there's, there's, there's actually, when we talk about the grid, there's actually three grids, right? There's an east, there's a, a, an east grid, a west grid, and a Texas grid. And they don't share power among each other very much. There are not too many points of, uh, of contact with sharing. And so it, it can be a regionalized issue. Uh, and, and I think, no, I, I, I'm, I'm concerned that a, a number of things. One, you mentioned you and your wife have electric vehicles. As more and more uh, people and with the current administration, uh, you know, pushing uh, uh, electric vehicles, that's going to be an issue for the grid. We have artificial intelligence, which I, I gave you some stats. It, clearly, it's going to be an issue uh, of how we find enough power to drive AI environments. And then there's also uh, a, a policy going on now where the administration is trying to bring uh, industries and production back into the states for national security. Uh, and you, 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 you add those three together, and I think it's going to be a huge challenge for the grid. Now, each one is, you can't argue against e either one of those mm -hmm. policies. Uh, or what's happening, but it's going to be a challenge. So, is, so are there companies right now working on, and I talked about this could be an opportunity for growth in other, in other industries that are thinking about you know, story that I, that I told you, but I'll tell the audience. So I have a friend in central Italy, uh, a refrigerated and frozen food distribution business. And so he, he takes me over. He was all excited a couple of years ago to show me these buildings that he built. Now, in the area of Italy, they get 300 plus days of sun every year. But he built these giant buildings the size of a Costco warehouse store. You know, one is freezer, one is refrigerator temperature. And he said, you know how much power I consume from the grid? Zero, right? All solar on the roof. It's it's all self-sufficient. And he said, that's, that's for a good part of the year. So are there thoughts on how do we connect data centers to areas where we're, we're using either alternative or new power plant? Uh, sources. So nuclear power plant goes up, let's build data centers around that to consume some of that power or solar or wind. Yeah, it's interesting. A few weeks ago, I was watching CNBC and Mike Worth uh, came on as an interview. He's CEO of Chevron and, you know, he's working in the oil and gas environment. And what is he talking about? The oil and gas CEO, he's talking about where are we going to find enough power to run all the data centers that we have to build here in the United States. And as he was pointing out, you know, data centers run 365 days a year, every single minute of the year. And renewables really aren't reliable enough uh, in most areas to really uh, be reliable enough. We don't have the battery technology yet to store the power to run the data center. So I think to your point, if we can find, if, if someone can crack the code on batteries so that they can be much more efficient in storing power uh, to use wind or solar and, and, and other renewable energy uh, sources, I think that's a huge opportunity. But right now, uh, it's not reliable enough. Uh, we need, you know, nuclear power is a great solution, but 
uh, I don't know how long it would take to get a permit to build a nuclear power plant here in the United yes. States. It probably, it, I, 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 I probably wouldn't be around <laughs> by the time. Right. Well, we if they've had to be resourceful in Italy because they let the public vote on it uh, several decades ago, which you, I, I just don't believe in letting the public vote on, on power policy. But anyway, um, all right. So aside from those, you know, again, you're you're in a in a business that's kind of in the right place. And you you seem to have in your in your past, you've been able to see the future and, and what a good business is going to be. So right now you're in a business with uh, that's in a good market. Um, are there any other barriers other than the supply chain and specifically around power that uh, that are holding back growth for you right now? Yes, Um we used to be able to add on uh, to expand our data centers. We could usually do it maybe nine, 12 months. Now it's, uh, it may take 15, 18 months. Uh, first of all, getting the power from the utility, but we still have some supply chain constraints. Uh, in particular, generators and large electrical equipment are in short supply. And those are also barriers to uh, to our growth. And so if it takes longer to add on capacity, it's just going to exasperate the problem of finding enough power to, to and, run. And this that's course. not necessarily production capacity of the producers. That's just that that's just competition of demand, right? Because of the level of demand for the generators, or is it a little of both? It's just a little bit of both. Uh, we need we need more manufacturing supply. Uh, but demand is just uh, insatiable right now. Fascinating. You know, what's interesting also, Mike, is that uh, as we have a uh, shortage of power to fill demand, I, I think it's also a, a national issue because uh, from a defense standpoint, the larger the largest consumer of energy in the United States is the Department mm -hmm. of Defense. They, they, they do about three fourths of the uh, government's power consumption. And if we don't find ways to increase our power supply, uh, first, it's going to drive up costs for consumers. Secondly, I think it, it could be a national mm. defense issue. Well, yeah. It, so def there are lots of ramifications. So the defense issue. So that's an, that's an interesting piece. But also, you know, I'm, I'm just thinking about, you know, we we end up in in what is a first world country with some potentially third world challenges of gray outs and brown outs and and, and other things depending on uh, how this is handled uh, where we're, we're yeah. already seeing that i mean parts of california we've seen we, we, we yeah. we've seen that and it's it's um, i'm concerned that it could go elsewhere you know we're we're a large operator in texas texas has its own grid it's the largest consumer of renewable en energy in the U.S. of any state. Uh, but uh, we're concerned that uh, all the demand for power there is uh, it, it's going to result in problems if we just continue to rely on renewables without any in, you know, uh, uh, increases in, in, in technological capacity mm -hmm. for batteries. Well, this has been this is fascinating. Jerry, and a lot of things for our audience members and CEOs to think about on a macro level of, of what some constraints could be, you know, for all of the goodness that AI is bringing, it's bringing another challenge that may have been uh, expected by some, but, but maybe unexpected to those who aren't, aren't familiar with the industry. So this has been fascinating. We'd love to have you back um, in, you know, on another, another episode when we, when we figure out the, the power problem, but uh, this has been terrific. And thank you for joining. Anytime. Uh, I enjoyed it. I, yeah, always good talking sure. with you. Take care. You've been listening to SBI's GTM Value Creation Corner podcast with CEO Mike Hoffman hosting. Visit sbigrowth.com to read SBI's latest research, join upcoming events, or learn about SBI's GTM services. Don't forget to subscribe to this podcast and connect with us on LinkedIn.